If you're into cheap holidays packed with free cool things, stay tuned. Hi, Orlando from Wishcasting. On this episode you'll discover how to get free entrance to Seychelles world's top beaches, how to save on transport around the islands, how to save on accommodation, how to dine till you explode with little money, all the recommended top locations by locals to avoid tourists. Our top priority is saving money and having a local experience. We have low-cost travel guides for Dubai, Italy and plenty more. Tap this pop-up above and check them out. We're not paid for these videos so subscribing and liking helps us a lot. We also recommend watching the previous videos we've done on Seychelles, so Seychelles Episode 1 and Seychelles Episode 2, because they fully describe our experience and how to get around the island in the specifics. So go ahead and check that out, it's in the link just above. On our fifth day, we went trekking on the tallest mountain in Seychelles, the Mont Blanc. We heard so much about it and got so curious. We parked our car at the nearby tea factory. The trail is located alongside the Sans Souci Road, about 300 meters above the tea factory. When you come in this area, the tea factory and the tea tavern are over here. Tea factory is down this hill. The specialty in this area is black tea and uh, black tea with the vanilla. To go to the production and see how they do the tea, you have to come here on Fridays. We're gonna go to Mont Blanc, which is that one up there. If you can see it, this is tea. You see tea and coffee unit. This is all the tea that they're growing on the slopes. Once you come up from the tea factory, which is this way, you're gonna reach an area right here where it says Mont Blanc. We came here in the morning to fully appreciate the views before the clouds rolled in at midday. The trail leads to a platform atop the cliff of the Mont Blanc with a spectacular panorama and views of the tropical birds swirling above and below you. This mountain forest is home to many Seychelles birds, so be ready to see a lot of them. The trail's length is around 3.2 kilometers and takes a 40 minute trek one way. The Mont Blanc rises up to 667 meters and offers the best views over the island of Mahé. The initial part of the trail passes through an old tea plantation. As the trail elevates, you find more and more lichens and mosses covering most surfaces. You'll find jackfruit trees here. Plenty fall to the ground and decompose. We first thought it were dead animals. It's the second time that we meet this kind of strange creature. It's completely destroyed and there's like small eggs inside, but I tried to press on one of them. It looks like a stone. So maybe an animal that was eating stones, I don't know. Let's see up, maybe it's a fruit. Oh, it's a fruit, it's Danny. It's a fruit. We then found out, thanks to our guest house hosts, that those were fallen jackfruits. The stones were seeds. Interesting. Jackfruit is a common fruit here. Locals use it as a potato substitute or a salad ingredient. We really liked it. Pity it's not available in Europe. Once we reached the top, we took some beautiful pictures and relaxed for a while. Ah, oh, you're cleaning your sweat on me, huh? Ugh. Recognize the path by crosses, white crosses, or these things right here. Yeah. No, you're not. You get to another area that looks like this. You have a uh, point of view of the actual seaside, the seacoast. You have these barriers here, and I think you can be quite confident of stepping on it, even though if you press on some of them, they actually bend. But it's on a rock, so it should be okay. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous view. If you don't come here, you're really missing out. We then went for a visit at the local tea factory just right next. You can view the tea processing and the machinery in the museum. You can buy tea and do tea tasting. Unfortunately, the tea factory isn't open all the time, so you have to call them beforehand. We had lunch over these beautiful tables and enjoyed the view. It was outstanding. We don't recommend buying tea here. As strange as it sounds, it's more expensive than the one in the supermarkets, which is the exact same. Buy tea before you leave Seychelles. It makes a really good gift. We then drove to the nearby Mission Lodge. Superb lookouts with spectacular views of central Mahé. A school was built here by the London Missionary Society in the 19th century to care for slave children dumped on the island after the abolition of slavery. In 1835, in England, there was the abolition of slavery. 2,409 African slaves in 10 years were placed in Mahé. That was in 1860. In 1876, Venstown School officially was opened. 
Queen Elizabeth II had tea in this small pavilion in 1972. Are you enjoying the video? Consider subscribing, you'll be updated on new travel guides and get the best cheapest tips. We don't get paid for these travel guides, so all possible support helps. On our sixth day, we left the main island Mahé and we went to La Digue Island for three nights at Ocean Self Catering. We took the speedboat for 150 euro return ticket. If you want to save money, use slower boats. They're cheaper. Ask around, many people use this service. Don't take a flight or a helicopter ride, it's not worth the money. Remember to take motion sickness pills if you're taking a boat or you'll vomit on board. We can personally guarantee this because we all threw up. Before you go to La Digue, take food and alcohol from the main island with you. The price on smaller islands is crazy. Speedboats provide 30 kgs allowance, so do it. We arrived at La Digue and went to our accommodation Ocean Self Catering. We were stunned by how cool it was. We chose this place because it's uh, highly rated on Booking.com and TripAdvisor. Around 33 euros per day stay, which is really, really good. So you got a grill right here. This is the place where we were greeted. So we were sitting here and laying down over there and they brought juices of orange juice, passion fruit and banana mixed together. And then they brought a map and they just, they explained really thoroughly what to do on this island, what to visit, where the shops are, where the police station is, where the hospital is, where you can have parties, what, you, what to visit. And they're gonna also provide us some contact numbers. So we know who to contact to do these uh, little tours, which will be, um, very useful. A small swimming pool to chill during the day. Our own garden, our own terrace, our own swimming pool, a canopy bed, beautiful decorations, another king-size bed, a beautiful rock made shower, and a fully furnished porch with a fully equipped kitchen. Wonderful. This is the kitchen right here. Sofa right over here. Table. All the utilities from a grill, from a cooker, from a microwave, from a coffee machine, from a boiler, from cutlery, glasses, everything. So you don't have to bring anything. It's called self-catering, exactly because you're gonna be doing it on your own. They just provide things to cook with and uh, you bring your food. This is the uh, sewing pool again. And there's a really, the only thing that you have to uh, handle is this really rare species that lives in this, uh, in this apartment and it's the biggest wild boar you have ever seen the wild boar my mom <laughs> oh by the way you have two fridges so if you want to bring your own wine you can cater this fridge and the other fridge one in this room and one in the kitchen which is really good don't you think there's a tv I'm doing a video and she has to talk now. Okay, so a beautiful shower. Come on, it looks great. And for the price, it's fantastic. I highly recommend it up to now. I will let you know for further experiences if there's anything that's bad, but I think it's gonna stay as it is. They're really friendly. They explain everything slowly. So they you listen to what they say with pleasure. There's no rush. So I feel that this place is close to perfection. Little details, they care about details. I did it. Very cozy here. <laughs> it's really cozy. He was a manager of a four-star hotel, so he really knows what he's doing. And he had a hotel in Jamaica. He was he had one of the best restaurants in, in the main island, Mahe. So he knows what he's doing. And I think that he does it very well. Location was perfect as well. Only five minutes walk from the beach. We paid a bargain of 35 euros per person for a four night stay. The first thing we did was to rent a bike. Everybody has a bike. If you don't have a bike, you just walk. La Diga is really small. You can do it and you can go around it in one day and see everything. The main supermarket on Mahe Island is called STC and you have the same thing here. So it's right next to Ocean self-catering. We were walking through the main road and we saw these locals playing this game right here. They hit the domino really hard on the table. Oh, this dog likes cuddling. 
If you're a couple, rent one bike, not two, and let the latter person ride in the back seat. It saves you a lot of money. Alternatively, pick up a tandem which is cheaper than two bikes. Don't take it from your hotel as it is always much more expensive. Twice as much in our case. This is the place where we took our bike, check it out. The bicycle place charges 100 rupees every day and my hotel rents it out for 150. So don't get it from your hotel, grab it from these guys along this road right here because you save money. If you're confused and can't find the places we've been to, don't worry, down in the description just below, you can find the link to all the places seen on the video. They're all marked in the same color. Print it and take it with you. Every day we went to the beach considered the most beautiful in the world, en source d'argent. Our host gave us a super trick to get in free of charge. Find out how on our next episode so you can do it too. There's still three days left on the island of Ladique. We'll be trekking around the island, going to secret beaches, and having strange encounters with huge animals along the road. Make your holiday special and follow the tricks on our next episode.